Sliders and settings can be a little tricky in 2K22. So we'll not only look at some of the options to update and tweak, but also show you different match table options in universe mode. Before we start, here's today's sponsor. This episode is brought to you by Fans Custom. If you're looking for something personal and customized for either your own sports teams, or you're like me and you're a small creator, Fans Custom has you covered. From baseball to hockey to basketball, heck, even beach outfits, they got you covered. Jerseys, hoodies, shorts, they can do it for you. and it's affordable. I select the design. I can put any number that I want on the jersey, front and back. You can put a custom name on the jersey. You can even upload custom images to be able to put on the jersey. It's simple, easy to use. There are sizes for men, women, kids, and even preschool. So as you could guess, I'm probably going to be getting my kids the assembled jerseys. It's great quality. Shipping was quick. So head over to fanscustom.com. Use the code assemble. You get 10% off your jersey today. The first thing we're going to do before anything, let's head into options and go over to audio volume, your commentary, your music environment, your ring announcer, and the creator safe mode. I tend to pull the ring announcer down a little bit more. I want to be able to hear the music for me i find that with some of the patching lately some of the music for entrances is a little low so jack all this up and i turn the ring announcers down the other thing is if you are a streamer if you're a youtuber and you're playing 2k22 toggle the creator safe mode on and off when it's turned on it will remove all of the in-game music all of the stuff that will get you copyright strikes it will mute entrance music. It will mute all of the menu music too. Okay, let's look at the gameplay options. Set things up so I'm on legend and simulation. I've got the mini games kept to rapid. I turn road break off because I find it just gets annoying for me. For the entrance run in mid match, post match, I leave it as player. I set it as payback and it's on. The blood is on. Subtitles, I turn off and allow the created superstar, leave that on. Any tutorial tips and subtitles, for me, I turn them off. Now, over to presentation tab. Superstar HUD. I've tested playing both. I've gone through and had the HUD on like we always do. I've turned the HUD off. I have to say, just for me, don't like having the HUD turned off. I thought I was going to, if you want to like an authentic experience, if you want to challenge yourself in this game, by all means, try it out for yourself and turn off a lot of the prompts for signatures finishers. The problem is, is once you do all of that, unless you know your character really, really well, you won't really know when you have any signatures and finishers ready to go. Fatigue I leave on, the control help and match rating HUD I leave on. I've tested this one on and off because I don't always like having the star rating on my screen. But when you turn it off, the control help for signatures and finisher prompts will not pop up. The reversal prompt, I left it on. The camera cuts, all the camera options, I leave them on. Except for post-match replay, I turn that off. And the run-ins and the breakout HUD, I turn that one off. Specifically because I'm sharing a lot of content and when I post stuff here, or you have good images, you take a lot of screen captures maybe. I don't always want it to have the breakout, press A button for the breakout in the top left corner. This is the same thing for post-match. If you leave this on, it will help you if you want to be able to have any of the breakout prompts to be able to run into the match. For me, I turn this off, I want a cleaner experience. But you may want to leave it on. Okay, for the balancing, for the AI, this is kind of up to you. Play with it, see how you like it. I've changed a lot of these settings up to about 65%. There are a ton of other content creators out there that say here's these settings if you want to do it for this class of SAR, cruiserweights, heavyweights. You yourself may even have some good setting options. I'm just showing you what I have set up to make things a little bit more challenging on Legendary. If you're like, hey bro, I want a true authentic experience, then just jack, just jack everything up. Jack it up. Jack it. For entrance run-in, mid-match, and post-match run-ins, I've turned these all the way down. I really don't want this to occur that often. We'll talk about universe mode settings in a bit too, uh, where we're talking about cash-ins for money in the bank. The referee downtime, throw this all the way up to 100%. It doesn't make a huge difference. I have knocked the referee out and he, he's gotten up fairly quickly, but it does allow a little bit more time. So if you want to be able to get in there, smack them around, and then you want to be able to go get a chair and just do some damage, and you can get it done. The re basic reversal windows I've turned up to allow me more time to press to get a reversal. Rollout frequency, I turned it down a little bit. Rollout duration as well for the ring, I've turned that down to about 40%, not too much. The AI difficulty damage scaling, I turned it up to around 65, 66%. That one I'm more just playing with to see how much damage they'll incur, how much it will increase over the course of the match. And the drag and the escape, I just leave it as 50. The last tab here for targeting, I left everything as it was. The only thing I changed was I toggled the target referee manual. I turned that on. This allows you to target the referee in the match. We can't get those special referee matches in the game like we want, but if you're a heel, you're a nasty heel in a match, 
press down on the thumbstick and you will target the referee in the match. This way you could pull off some moves on him and it will be fun. Okay, let's jump into universe mode and go through some of the options as well as match tables. All in classic mode, set it up how you like what works for you. Right now, I just turned off the automatic rivalries. I wanna be able to create them. I turned on the Undertaker streak. I keep the tag team formations off. I don't want anybody else creating tag teams automatically in my universe. I let the crowd reaction change. I like injuries to be on. I turn off the show introduction. I don't need to see that at the beginning of every single broadcast. The interest is I leave on because I want to be able to go through them. For cash-ins, I turn all of these off. I want to be able to dictate and control the cash-ins when they will happen. I can set up automatic cash-ins for that show. And if I'm the money in the bank holder, I can set up to cash in during the match and not leave it up to the AI in case I want to simulate more matches over the course of several months. It won't affect money in the bank holders. Universe mode tips are off too. Okay, match tables. Match tables can be interesting. Doesn't always work the way you want it to work. I'll talk about that in a minute when it comes to things like ladder match and money in the bank specifically. But you can set up regular match occurrences in the match table and you can set up rivalries to have specific matches week over week. For each of your shows, you can set up their own match table. If you set up a match table on Raw, it does not carry over and duplicate on any other programs. You have to set it up for every single show and every single pay-per-view the way you like. This can be fun though, because you can add in your custom matches in the match table for those to occur, instead of having to manually go in and create the match. For example, I might have a three-way dance match where it's an elimination style triple threat, a first blood, even a gauntlet match I've created. I want those to occur maybe every single week in my program, or I want them to happen just during pay-per-views. We can do all of that within the match table. If you're not too familiar, you have your chance percentage of this match occurring in the show. The limit is how many times this type of match can occur during the show. Select it if you want it to be the main event, and if it's an option, you can set it up to be for the championship too. If you wanna to have it so that there's only gonna be one normal one-on-one -on -one match, and that's always going to be the main event, Set it to 100%, you'll be good to go. If you wanna have cage matches on your weekly show, you can change the percentage there too and include those matches. Now, if you are in that week's show or pay-per-view, and let's say it's money in the bank and the pay-per-view has already started, yes, you can back out, you can go into the match table and you can customize it. However, it won't reflect in the pay-per-view because the pay-per-view week has already started. So you need to do this ahead of the show, ahead of the pay-per-view, if you want the changes to apply. Money in the Bank pay-per-view specifically is the one that I found so far that gives me a lot of trouble when it comes to match card creation and match table. I wanted to have a five-way ladder match and I wanted to have another ladder match in there too. I wanted my five-way to only have one of them on the card and I wanted it to be the main event. And when I wanted a second ladder match, I wanted that to occur too, because I have the men's side and the women's side. I wanted two ladder matches to occur. When I set this up, it didn't work. I tried multiple times, multiple different percentages, and I tried to adjust it as much as I could. I can never get it when I created the match card in the match table to get it to have the two ladder matches with the men's and the women's money in the bank occurring. And don't forget too, when you're building out your match table, you can vacate all of the slots if you like to start over. If the CPU is already pre-building and pre-populating something, you can simply clear them out if you don't want those matches to occur. You can set up multiple matches to be the championship match too. And these are under just regular matches. Don't forget that you can set up the rivalries to also be either the main event and the type of match that you wanna have for it. If you're setting up a match table with a rivalry, like a one-on-one, -on -one, I did an example here where I had a one-on-one -on -one ladder match. I turned the percentage of this match type happening to 90% and occurring once, but the main event and the championship options are grayed out. Match type will occur, but in the rivalry, you can't force it to have the championship match. Tweaking the match tables on a week to week basis for your Raw and SmackDown shows, for example, it may not require a ton of change. I know for me, it's a lot of just making sure that I have a one on one match as a main event every single week, one, maybe two tag team matches, or I set them up as custom tornado tags or an extreme rules match, just so my show is like clean and consistent and I'm not getting a ton of repetition. 
When it comes to the pay-per-views, you will wanna go in there though and customize every single show. For example, Extreme Rules. When I went into Extreme Rules and what was set up by the CPU as default, number one, the number of matches is defaulted at nine on pay-per-views, but it can go all the way up to 14 if you like, thinking about your WrestleMania card that's gonna be massive. But I laughed when I went into Extreme Rules because the way the match card was set up, I hated it. There was one Extreme Rules match set up by default with a 25% chance of happening. It was gonna be the main event for a championship, but there's only one of them. They also had a two on two tables match, but this was only 25% chance of happening. So for an Extreme Rules pay-per-view that you're like, I wanna have cage matches and Extreme Rules and tables and all of this, this is where it comes in really handy with the match table to design it the way you want. So every pay-per-view you build has a feel to it that you've decided on. You could set it up so that every single match percentage is going to be 25% and try to equal it out or 10% and try to make sure that they are all going to have about the same value. So this is to give you more control, a little bit more detail if you want to get granular when it comes to your universe building. And some of the options in the main menu can have some good impact in terms of having better matches where the AI is giving you a little bit more of a challenge. But let me know what settings you like and if you have tips for the rest of the community in the comments below. Give the episode a thumbs up, it really helps the channel out a lot. And if you need more tips in 2K22, check out this one for cashing in money in the bank in universe mode. See ya.